Hello and welcome back to my channel and in today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the newly released Mohican Transcraft Mohawk. If you are in the market for picking one of these figures up then I highly recommend that you should check out Shozi's store and for that there will be a link down in the description box below. This is my first time ever purchasing a Transcraft product and I do believe it's one of their first entries from this particular company and they have decided to start off with Mohawk from Transformers The Last Knight, a character whose design I was a massive fan of and was really quite annoyed when there was no merchandise released by Hasbro regarding this specific character. For the packaging, we get a really very detailed look of Mohawk in his robot mode with the silhouette design. We've got a short quote from Mohawk. What up, fellas? Man, I want to beat you right now. And then him laughing. We've got Mohican Transcraft. The side of the packaging has an image of Mohawk in his vehicle mode with the back of the packaging having a larger image of the silhouette of Mohawk in his robot mode. The side of the packaging has an image of the character in his robot mode. And honestly, I've got to say that this is a really, really good product, particularly for the value that it costs. Now, one thing to note is that the instruction manual for this product is really bad, and that is really one of the only gripes I have with this figure. But the figure comes packaged within his motorcycle alt form, so that is where I'll be starting off. I believe this to be a fantastic recreation of how Mohawk looked in the movie when he transformed into his motorcycle alt form. Now, I'm not a massive motorbike enthusiast, so I'm not entirely sure as the name of this motorbike, but I think that they've done a great job in in capturing the really, really almost badass looking motorcycle that Mohawk obtained in the last night. This definitely does look very fierce in its design and has got some incredible detailing. Most of this is robot mode parts, but it's all been sculpted to really look quite coherent to that of the motorbike. I love the kind of metallic reflecting turquoise green that they've used for the inside of the rim of the motorcycle, as well as on this brake disc. And we've even got some of those subtle green highlights throughout. We've even got some nice detailing at the front of where the front headlight would be as well as a set of brake and handlebars. This section here can actually rotate which is a real nice attention to detail and isn't integral to robot mode transformation whatsoever. I do believe the tyres to actually be made out of a slightly more rubbery type of material than the part of plastic that the figure has got so that definitely does give this character a very premium feel. We've got details such as the seat here. I really really like this motorbike mode and he does roll really nicely as well. They've even gone the extra mile and given him a slight kick stand so you can in fact display him in motorcycle mode on his own or if you wish you can retract this and rotate this around to the back and get a really really flush movement along the ground which I think is cool. His weapons do store within this mode. He comes with a set of four different dagger blades which all are combined and you can separate those off to the sides as well as a larger single dagger on the side which you can also detach if you so choose to give it more of a coherent look for the motorcycle mode but definitely a really really nice looking bike. I really like the detailing here of where the springs are really really cool and it definitely does look very faithful to what we see in the movie besides this section here where the mohawk does in fact stick out but this figure is rather quite small so it does amaze me the level of engineering that they have managed to actually pack into this small dude it definitely is a really nice representation of what we see in the movie and just giving you one last look at all of the details it really is a fantastic looking piece on both sides. Very symmetrical in its design, which is nice to see, considering that in the movie, Mohawk did have some abnormalities to his design. But it's definitely cool to see them getting a rather nice symmetrical looking motorbike. Now to go back to what I was saying earlier on regarding the instructions, honestly they are really really bad. It does state that this figure transforms in approximately 10 steps, but per every step there's about 4 different things that you have to do. So I honestly would just use the instructions merely as a guidance and perhaps look at some reference images of how this character is supposed to look in his robot mode or motorcycle mode depending on what reversal you are doing the transformation in and just try your best to align everything up. To begin with what I like to do is come to this top section here and just take it and split it apart. It can be rather difficult to do but just separate these two halves here and already we have exposed Mohawk's awesome looking head sculpt. Once we've done that we can see these ball joints here. You're just going to want to take this section and bring this down, straighten this leg out and then bring this section out. These become the legs of the figure in robot mode so just bring this down as well. Now what I recommend doing is coming to these pieces here and just untabbing where this hand section is away from this piece here. You'll separate this tab and slot and repeat the same process now for this side. 
just separating all of this and just ensuring that you are beginning to loosen up some of the more vital connections. Now what I recommend doing is coming to this piece here, taking this entire wheel and actually pulling it out. This figure does unfortunately parts form. This ends up in a completely different place than it would if you were to leave it on. So you do have to parts form in order to get this character into a more movie accurate look. But considering the complexity of the character's design, I can really see behind the reasons why they had to do this. Now what I recommend you do is come to this section and just lift this whole piece up from this section. Now we're going to come to these pieces here and just split those out to the sides just to aid some extra clearance for later on. Now we're going to turn our attentions to these top sections and once again splitting it in half. It's more or less just splitting this character into two separate sections. Just unfolding him really does help to get the maximum level of efficiency out of the transformation. You're going to want to bring this piece down and now what we're going to do here is take this section and just lift this up. This will free this joint up which will allow us to rotate the waist around just like so. And now what we can proceed to do is come to these legs, rotate this section around, rotate this section, fold down Mohawk's toes. And he does more or less have a rather chicken leg look in the movie. And the instructions do ask you to in fact chicken leg him. It's up to you to the level of degree that you wish to have him chicken leg to. I like to have it to this degree as I think that that gives him a much more movie accurate look. And I believe he scales with some of the other masterpiece movie figures from Hasbro and Takara a lot, lot better. Lift this piece up now and then you just want to take these arms and have those out to the sides. With these pieces here, what you're going to want to do is take this here and just where this slot is, you're going to want to plug it into this tab. So snap that into place and the ball joints are more than likely going to pop off seeing how small this character is. But if you take care and ease with the transformation, you shouldn't find yourself having too many problems. And then now what you're going to want to do is just bring those together and then this kickstand here will in fact fold outwards as that becomes almost like a small smokestack for the top. And then what we'll do here is there is a big tab here that will plug into this slot here. You're just going to want to align that up and tab that into place. And then these sections here, they more or less rest. There is a tab connection, but you just have to align it up appropriately. Take the head now and rotate it around and then come back to this. And there is a way to actually lock these into place. I found myself having just to really mess around with it until you find the groove. It has to go somewhat like this into the slot. Once again, it can be rather fiddly due to the smallness of the character's design, but that is how you want the main torso to be in fact aligned. So you can see these sections here will slide into these grooves. It doesn't necessarily tab into place. It more or less just rests there. But now we're beginning to get the main bulk of the figure done. Rotate this down. And then what we can do here is rotate this around. And then the hands can also rotate around as well. Just repeat the same process now for this side. However, obviously we've got this huge wheel. So you're just going to want to bring this out to the sides. Try not to pop any of the joints off. And just bring this up. And then take this arm here and once again very similar to how we did before rotate the fist around bring this down you're going to want to ensure that the spikes are jutting outwards so that he can use them almost as if though he's got cuffs on the sides of his forearms and then with this section here you can just collapse this down on his shoulder we're now going to want to take this tire that we removed earlier on and there is a small slot in there that you're going to want to plug onto this tab here. It doesn't really matter what way you display it. I tend to just have it so that the wheel that is bare here faces the top. So just align that and tab that into place. And with all that done, here we have the Transcraft Mohawk fully transformed and in his robot mode. So definitely a lot more of a straightforward transformation than the instructions first look upon first glance. I definitely think that the transformation to this character is rather fun and it's quite enjoyable reversing from robot mode to vehicle mode and vice versa. And I definitely think you're left with a really nice looking robot mode. It definitely does slim down and compact really nicely like we saw in the movie. And I think that he's got some incredible movie accurate looking details. Yes, this arm here does parts form, but once again, due to how small this figure is and how involved the transformation is already, I definitely 
definitely think that they've done a really good job. And this is really the only time that I really think that parts forming was necessary, as I can't imagine how they would have managed to get both wheels on each of his arms without really compromising the look of either mode. Taking a look at the figure up close and personal, the head sculpt on this character is absolutely remarkable. This captures Mohawk's appearance from the last night incredibly well. We've got a gold grill for teeth. Obviously, these are actually the chains on the bike that become his mouth in the movie, which is a fantastic attention to detail. I really like the metallic green highlights to the actual Mohawk itself. And he's got this really bug alien-esque type of design for the eyes. I love how they kind of jut out to the sides. It really, really does look very movie accurate. And here we've got some nice detailing within the main torso with these green highlights as well. The kickstand does almost become a small smokestack, which I think looks nice. And once again, I really do like the placement of these tyres. Obviously, this one is integral to transformation, whereas this one does unfortunately have to detach. But once again, it's not a massive drawback. We've got some of these razor blades on the sides of Mohawk's forearms. These ones look slightly more menacing than the other side, and these are painted in a silver paint. I like how the smokestacks flare out to the sides here. These are on their own hinges, so you can rotate those forwards and backwards but they're so small and they don't really add much to the overall detail so I don't tend to mess around with those too much but you can really see how slim this figure is it really does compact really nicely and definitely gives you that very chicken-esque type of design I really do like how you can move the legs in a variety of different ways to either extend him or make him slightly smaller now in terms of articulation the character does have a really nice ball joint at the head and Really surprisingly, the eyes are in fact on their own ball joints, so you are able to move those back and forth ever so slightly on these really stiff ball joints. It really only moves back and forth that far. The mouth is on its own hinge, so you can in fact open and close the mouth to your own liking. These arms here are on ball joints, so you can lift them up and down. And there's also a ball joint here allowing to rotate them forwards and backwards, as well as out to the sides. He does in fact have a rotation joint up where the bicep is, but seeing as this is on a ball joint, you can rotate it here. He has roughly 90 degree bend at the elbow, and the wrists can hinge outwards, they can't hinge inwards, but they can rotate 360. No waist rotation of sorts, but he does have an ab crunch, so you can crunch him forwards or backwards which is a super nice attention to detail. We can also rotate the legs forwards this far and then back all the way. They can hinge out to the sides. There's a hinge joint here and a hinge joint here. And then finally, this section here is on a ball joint, so it can rotate 360, as well as ankle pivots slightly forwards and backwards. And due to transformation, the toes can be adjusted ever so slightly, but I wouldn't recommend rotating them too much in case you make the joint rather loose. And then you'll probably have some stability problems within robot mode. Now, in terms of accessories, as we saw within vehicle mode, you do in fact get two accessories. One is a dagger blade, which is really elongated. This has a peg here that will insert into the palm of the character's hand. Unfortunately, we never see him wield these within the movie, but I do believe there was some cool concept art that was in fact revealed, and it was showing Mohawk to actually use weapons like this, so it's great to see Transcraft referring back to some of the concept art to get a cooler look for Mohawk. Unfortunately, the fingers can't wrap around, so it does look rather abstract when inserted into the character's hand, but once again, it's nice for display options. And this one here, I imagine, is almost as if though it's like a full quantity of them, almost like a utility belt full of four daggers, and this here does just plug onto the side of his thigh, giving him a really armoured look, which I think looks definitely really nice. And this is a super nice looking figure to look at. It definitely does evoke a rather movie masterpiece vibe to him. And he definitely does scale rather nice with some MPM figures, which I'll bring out for some comparisons in just a second. I definitely wouldn't say he's the scale with the Studio Series. He is rather too big for that. He should more or less be the same size as the recently released Studio Series RC Free Pack. But on its own, it definitely is a fantastic looking representation presentation of a really unique looking movie design and I'm so glad that Transcraft have done this character justice in releasing this action figure. For some movie comparisons here I have the MPM Bumblebee and the leader class Megatron from the last night. I think that Mohawk scales really well with this movie masterpiece Bumblebee. This was definitely a scale that we saw in the movie so I think this works great. However I don't really think Mohawk works too well when next to the mainline leader Megatron. He was considerably shorter in the movie but if scale isn't a problem for you then these two definitely do look really good on on the shelves and it just really opens the door now for a possible release of Onslaught to really complete the Last Night team. So that was my review on the Transcraft Mohican aka the Last Night Mohawk. 
Personally, I actually really enjoyed this particular release. When I first saw pictures of this figure, I thought that it looked fantastic, and then the price point was revealed of being around $30, and I thought, wow, this figure must either be really good value for the money, or must be really, really rubbish, as that's a really good price for a figure of this quality. Upon having this figure in hand, I definitely think the quality is great. The plastic feels really sturdy. He's covered in paint applications. The transformation is very involved. I think he comes with a good slew of accessories, and I really do think he captures the appearance of Mohawk in the movie really really nicely. This figure is definitely worth the price point and considering how cheap he is I would almost say that Transcraft are out beating some of the other third party companies out there as this quality is up there with the likes of Unique Toys and DX9. It, with all that being said if you are in the market for picking one of these figures up then I definitely recommend once again that you should check out Shozi's store. He is available in stock right now and for that there will be links down in the description box below for a direct link to this Mohican slash Mohawk figure and to Shozi store's main page. I hope that you enjoyed my review. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below and be sure to let me know what you think of this figure and whether or not you'll be adding him to your collection. Thanks for watching.